So, I finished reading Walden, and then I found myself reading Mein Kampf. That's right, I go from H.D. Thoreau to Adolf Hitler. And I'm thinking, wow, this is really going to turn my head around. But amazingly enough, it didn't. They were much more similar than I ever imagined. They were both idealists, with a love of purity, and a vehement dislike for sensuality and material values, and a deep suspicion of almost every form of government. The difference comes in their objectives, made following their analysis of the world. Thoreau wanted to live as simply as possible, and perhaps try to convince some others to do the same. Hitler wanted to resurrect the fatherland, extend it, and establish a Reich that would last for a thousand years. Thoreau didn't have much luck as a proponent and apostle of the simple life. Hitler, astoundingly, with no training or money or connections, a disgruntled veteran, a lowly corporal at that, armed only with a vision, came much closer to achieving his goals. When you read his book, that success is no longer so amazing. He knew exactly what he wanted to do. He knew exactly what it would take to get it done. Idealist? Maybe. But no dreamer. He began with a group of six or seven, poor devils he called them. They put an ad in a paper and drew a hundred people to a hall, and Hitler learned that he had a talent for speaking. He was a true rabble-rouser, and that was, again, exactly what was needed. The other political parties would hold docile meeting, meetings, feeble bilge, he called them. There were always fights when Hitler spoke. He and his men were prepared for opposition, which they immediately crushed and tossed out of the building. Hitler didn't care if the audience agreed with him, or disagreed, or laughed at him, or hated him. Any reaction was a positive. All he cared was that they were there, and he was being noticed. That was enough. He could build his victory from that seed. Catastrophe is good, he said. It's the beginning of redemption and renewal. And he did succeed, using propaganda aimed to whip up and inflame the emotions of the masses. Hitler wanted fanaticism, passion, white-hot commitment, and total devotion, nothing less. If he had to lie to get it, that was fine. And by the way, big lies are more successful. So don't hold back. The end justifies any and all means. He had a lot of work he had a lot to work with, too. Germany had been gutted by the Treaty of Versailles. The Weimar Republic was a sick joke. The economy was shot. Currency was worthless. The people were disarmed and defenseless, and the culture was degenerate. Hitler lived for a while in Vienna, which he called his social laboratory, where he got his first schooling. His next institution of higher learning was the army, which he adored, and he knew he'd need a powerful army to achieve his goals. The responding crew at the early meetings were called monitors. They were under orders to attack any opposition and silence it. When the venues got larger, the monitors were given uniforms and weapons, and they were called the stormtroopers. They enjoyed their work, and later, in the thousands, they were in charge of crowd control and the streets. Hitler knew he'd have to fight to get what he wanted, and he didn't shy from it. He embraced violence. In any conflict, he insisted on attack. Once Germany had been resurrected, he said, it would need more land in Europe for food, and the principal enemies of that state would be France, the Jews, and Russia. In the coming war, he was sure to be on the attack. The army, all the soldiers, feel better about fighting when they are on the attack. When a new government formed, there would be no more rule of the majority. That was for cowards and the ignorant. There would be an election and a leader. The Fuhrer would be chosen. He would have absolute authority and complete responsibility. He would demand total allegiance. Anything short of that was treason, punishable by death. Real power is the power to punish, and the punishment should be open, brutal, and swift. Real power is pitiless. 
Hitler wanted to smash the present poisonous world order, and he would do it with an army that was unshakable, invincible, because of national pride and honor. Education for the youth in the form of military training would elevate them out of the hothouse of depravity in which they lived. Destiny was theirs, along with the blessings of God. Greatness awaited. I can't overlook the eugenics. The racial question is the key not only to world history, he wrote, but to all human culture. He developed a fierce, deep, and lasting hatred of the Jews, and an opposite attraction for the Aryans, pure of blood, handsome, brilliant, and whose highest characteristic was a fulfillment of duty. So he said, It's all in the book, down to the details. He modeled much of his thinking on the Catholic Church. He knew the power of colors and the right insignia, the swastika, and the suggestive magic, the intoxicating allure of tremendous spectacle, which made anything seem possible, as he would speak, in a frenzy, to thousands and thousands for three hours, so far from those poor devils in a tiny, empty room. People think about Germany before the Second World War, and they wonder, how in the hell did this fellow hoodwink a population of millions? How in the world did they go down that road, goose-stepping and saluting Heil Hitler to, to all the terrible bombings, winners in Russia, and the concentration camps for the Jews, the final solution, all that madness? When you read his book, you wonder no longer. It's really like a magician giving away the secrets behind the tricks, or an architect showing you the blueprints for his proposed development. Hitler was a shrewd, angry, driven man. He diagnosed the revolting situation around him and proposed a spectacular cure. For a while it seemed to be working. Herr Hitler was a genius. Everything he said came to pass. Then he pushed too far and too hard. He counted on the English for support, and when it did not come, tried to pound them into submission. The Japanese got those Americans involved. Russia proved to be unconquerable. He was fighting on too many fronts, and everything collapsed. Sure, because all along, from the start, it had been a tightrope, an all-or-nothing proposition. Hitler hated half-measures.